Hello and welcome to the shop. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about a jig. Now this jig was sent to me by Ron Rosello and what it's used for is taking the corners off of your blanks prior to taking them to the lathe to turn. Uh, I'm not actually going to build this but I think I'll give you enough information in the video today to where if you want to build one you'll be able to do it without any trouble. I'm not going to get really hung up on measurements because I think you should build this uh, using the, the wood that you have in your shop and you should build it to fit the base of your bandsaw. Uh, so the measurements are not all that important and really you only need a small area. The rest of this is, is not really used most of the time. The way the jig works is there's, a, there's what we're going to call a base, and it's just a rectangular piece of wood. I believe Ron used beech in this case, but it could be a piece of plywood or MDF. The second piece of wood he used is the same width or the same length as the base. The width is not super important. I mean, it could have been this wide. It could have been this wide. Uh, it's not all that important. It's just here and screwed into the top of the base to hold this piece of angle iron. Now, what I want to point out is this piece of angle iron is what does all the work. It's the full length of the jig. It doesn't need to be. You really only are using a small section of it. Okay, but I think it's kind of nice to have it at least long enough on both sides to accept the full length of the longest blank that you think you might use on this jig. This is aluminum angle. You can pick it up at the big box store. It's not that expensive. He countersunk three screws to hold it onto the 45 of this top block of wood. And then he just cut out, and you could do that with a hacksaw. Uh, just cut right down both sides to make a little opening. Clean the bottom up. Looks like he used a file there to clean it up so it's nice and flat. And the way it works is, and you'll see, I'm going to show one more thing. It's not all the way to the end of the, of the block of wood. You could move it farther out if you'd like. I don't think that was important either. I think as long as this V is either close to the edge or right on the edge, you're going to be just fine. But the way it works is you will clamp this down to the table of your bandsaw and you will adjust how deep it goes. The blade is coming right through here. And you'll adjust how deeply you want the blade to go into this slot based on the thickness of your blank. So as your blank is coming through, you've got your blade running down inside of this track. The blank is going to slide along this aluminum angle iron through the blade, and it's going to take the corner off. And like I said, you can adjust this in or out towards the blade to take more or less of that corner, depending on what you need for your application. I'm over at the bandsaw, and you can see where I've lined the blade up to where it's just going to take the edge off my block of wood. You'll notice over here to the right, I've got two clamps, one at the back and one at the front of my table, holding this jig onto the table square with the front of the table. So that's why I didn't get hung up on measurements. I really think that your jig should at least be the length of your table so that you can ensure that you're not lining it up at an angle. You want this to be straight so you get a nice straight cut on your blank. I'm a little nervous about this blank because it's not perfectly square. You can see it's kind of a little misshapen. Uh, so it won't give me a perfect octagon, but I think it will be decent enough to where you can see what it's going to look like. Let's go ahead and start the bandsaw and make our first cut.
because my blank wasn't perfectly square initially, I got a little bit of an odd shaped blank. You can see it's a little bit uh, wider than it is tall, but it did a nice job cutting those corners off. And now I'm ready to go to the lathe and I'm going to have a lot less issue with hitting those corners with my tool and possibly chipping them out. I really hope you enjoyed the video on this jig and I hope I gave you enough information to where you're able to recreate the jig uh, in your shop if you feel like it's something that, that will benefit you. Um, I use this jig primarily on cross-cut or ingrain blanks. Uh, when turning a, a, a blank with the grain, I normally don't have a lot of trouble with chip out, but if you're using you know, a, a, a 45 degree cut or a, a, an, in cut, an ingrain blank, it can sometimes catch and basically rip large chunks off your blank, sometimes even completely off the tube. So by taking the corners off, you reduce the area, the surface area, and the possibility of those catches, and it makes a huge difference. I, my success rate on ingrain blanks has gone up tremendously since starting to use this jig. If you have any questions about this jig that I can answer, please leave them in the comments below. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening, everybody.